Hey guys, we are here with another art hop for Pick Your Passion. So last month we talked about watercolor. This month we're going to talk about a passion I've had for the past few months. I just can't help myself. And I've talked about this in a couple of videos um, recently. And I know I did do a speed through video where I was making uh, paper clips and tags. Paper clips. Um, this is Lolly Palooza's fault. If you don't know who she is, I'll link her channel in the description below. I saw her make one of these on her channel and thought, oh, that's cute. I should give that a try. And yeah, um, this isn't all of the ones I've made. I do have a storage book that I did and I have yet to film a DIY on at this time. But hopefully by the time you all see this, I'll have done that one already. Um, that has paper clips in it also, but I've done a lot of them. I think I've done one almost every day for the last two months. So yeah. Um, anyway, they are a lot of fun and they are a great way to use up all those little small bits and pieces that we've been collecting in our art room, um, which is a passion of mine uh, to collect different weird little objects, whether it's old keys or buttons or flowers or handmade embellishments or broken pieces of something I just collect all kinds of weirdness and when you do mixed media you know you never know what you're going to use this is an old luggage lock that I don't know where the key is but I've got the lock and so I did that um, here's a little bottle that I got some pigment in that I didn't enjoy but I saved the little bottle when I was done with it and um this one has a broken CD on it. I just, um, I, yeah, all kinds of things. Some of my painted feathers that I did and then had a drawer of what do I do with those? Well, they work right on a paper clip. So making paper clips, one of my passions. Now, how do I have the stuff on my table to make paper clips with without having to run over to the small bits like every two seconds to go look for something. I do still occasionally do that, but let me show you something that's part of this. Which would be this. So this is on my table. There, the base is a wooden tray. I'm gonna actually lift everything out and show you. And then I have bins and containers of different bits and pieces. And as I am journaling or creating paper clips or tags or something, I'm using up what's in here first. And then if I can't find something that's in here to use, I go to the bank of ephemera and small bits. Now, once every couple of months, I go through this I pull everything out of it or most out of it. I put away the things that have been in here for God knows how long and I haven't used them and I put them away or I toss them if they're just not speaking to me anymore. Um, and I don't toss them, toss them. I put them in a giveaway box. Um, and um, then I refresh it with new things. So let me hang on one second. <laughs> okay, it barely fits in camera. Shaky camera, sorry. It barely fits in camera. So this is the largest wood tray that I could find. I knew I wanted wood because by the time I got it filled up, when I want to lift it up and carry it and take it off the table, um, if it was just plastic, a couple times of that, it's probably going to crack um, with all of the weight of the paper. Paper weighs a lot. Um, so I found this at Marshall's. It was $20 and it measures, how much does it measure? The interior measures about 13, um, by 20 and a half, approximately. Um, I wanted to get as big of a tray as I could. That was super important to me. Then I took a bunch of small containers some that I had, some that were repurposed. Um, for instance, these are from, uh, what do you call those? Um, it's a Chipotle chicken veggie and rice bowl. You get these in the produce department. They're, they've got the veggies at the bottom that you warm up and the toppings and you add and you warm it some more. Um, anyway, it's just a repurposed food container. And so I have my um, 
tag, clothing tags. These are clothing tags, product tags from different things I've bought over the years. Um, that I, I've been collecting tags since like probably 2012. Um, another, oops, produce container filled with pa paper, blank scrap paper, and some hand painted and vintage paper. Then we've got a skinny container, which is from Target, with some scrapbooking paper and other little paper bits, that things I want to use up. And then I started arranging them in the tray so that they all fit nicely. I've got two more of the same size containers with fabric and smaller scraps and stickers in it, yeah, including yo-yos. Anybody still have fabric yo-yos around? <laughs> okay, then I have this little tiny basket that has um, scraps from other things I've made already in it, and that fits there. I have a muffin tin with teeny tiny bits and charms, paper clips, the little wood bases, um, safety pins, and things like that. That fits up here in front. Then I have these three little teeny tiny, and they fit here. Now these little jewelry parts just came in and there's actually room to have them live right there. And then that sits over on the side of my table very nicely over there. And I have all of the bits at hand that I want to try to use up and create my tags from and my paper clips. That really works well for me. I'm really passionate right now about having my parts and tools accessible but also having them out uh, and um, stored in a way that when I need to quickly clear the table because I want to switch gears from making tags and paper clips to creating a painting or doing a sewing project, I can quickly lift that tray up, put it on one of the drying racks on either end of my work table. I've got two, one on each end. I can, the tray will fit on one of the shelves in the drying rack. The table's quickly cleared. I can work on the other project. And then when I'm done with it, I can bring that tray back. Yes, and that works really well for me. Rather than just having a scattering of crazy, messy, just stuff everywhere that I just can't clean and I end up scooping into a box and then that just that gets chaotic. I can't deal with the chaos. This kind of organized chaos works much, much better for me. Also, I'm going through my small bits and pieces and finding things that don't serve. And um, like I said, once a m every month or two, I go through the tray and I clear out what's on there and I either put stuff away and pull new things or I say, you know, I haven't used this. I'm probably not gonna use this, it needs to go. And that's really working for me. How can you work your space so that you can quickly and easily get to the products, tools, and supplies that you know you have and you uh, want to use easily, quickly, but then cleanly and quickly clean up your space and switch gears when you need to without leaving a disaster in your wake because having chaos is one thing and we all are messy artists and things get chaotic, but in between we do need to clean and we do need to try to keep it organized because I don't know about you, but the chaos makes me completely insane. This works for me. Anyway, what works for you? Okay, so you've seen some footage of me creating um, some tags and paper clips, catching up, because I didn't do any over the weekend, oops. Um, I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to clean off the table um, using my tray method. So let's get to it, shall we?
So that's my passion at the moment. Besides watercolor, which is a constant thing for me, I love my watercolor, making tags and paper clips. I don't know, but I love that when I want to do something like that, if I have my room set up correctly, I can quickly pull that tray out, make a few paper clips and tags, and then put it back away again, and my table's clean, and I can get to watercoloring, sewing. I'm going to film a um, book binding video right now. Um, whatever the project is, I can quickly clear off the table and get started on the next thing and switch easily without creating a disastrous mess in my room that gets to be so bad at times that I can't find anything. So I guess my other passion is staying clean and organized in my art room as much as is humanly possible. What about you? That's it for right now. I will link all the other videos in the description below. Let me know what you do in your art room to stay clean and stay organized. And go show everybody else who is doing videos for this um, some love. I uh, like, share, and subscribe. If you want to follow me on social media and um, or support the free content here on YouTube or, or over in the art groups on Facebook, use the link tree link in the description below and you'll find all the different places you can find me and support me. And the most important thing is to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Find your creative passion, follow it, listen to it, and have fun with it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.